Attention. I have about the coolest filter in the world that I can I can that I can think of at least right now um, to show you in this tutorial. Now, there's two ways to get this filter. It, it's for free. One of the ways is you can go to the Adobe Labs website. If you have Photoshop CS5, all right, you can go to the Adobe Labs website. They have something on here called Pixel Bender. It's like a plug-in filter for Photoshop. So you can download it for CS5. The other thing is, is if you're watching this anytime I'm, I'm doing this at the end of March, early April, if you're watching the video then, Photoshop CS6 is out in beta and the filter is actually included right inside of CS6. So you can get it that way either. Either way is free, but I got to tell you, it's a must, it's a must try filter. And, and if you're into, into the effect that it produces, you're going to absolutely love it. All right, let's jump into Photoshop CS5 here. Take a look at what we got. We got just got a, a, an image, lots of detail. Though. That's the key here. There's lots of little details inside of it. I'm going to head up to the filter menu. I want to come down to Pixel Bender. Now, if you have the CS6 beta, it's actually listed right up here. It's right up toward the top. It's called Oil Paint. But we've got to go down here to Pixel Bender for CS5. It opens up a whole brand new window in a second here. And if you look at the list that we have of filters that we can use here, there's only one good one inside of the list. It's called Oil Paint. The other one just, they all do kinds of weird things. So choose Oil Paint. And we're going to zoom way in here because you got to see what it's doing. But I mean, without changing the setting, check that. Look at that. See the difference in what it's doing? I mean, it just basically creates an oil painting, but it's amazing because it, it's not just it's not just adding strokes everywhere. It's actually going around the edges and, and it's it's detecting the edges and then it's putting the strokes where they need to be. So you've got stylization, which kind of just it adds a little bit more. I always call it like this looks more like a texture over to the left. This looks more like curled brush strokes over to the right. All right. Cleanliness is almost like sharpening to me. It's almost like a very blurry brush stroke on the right and a very clean or a very sharp brush stroke over on the left. Okay, you can see the difference there. So I'm going to keep it over here to the right. Colorization just adds a little bit more color to it. Okay, you can see it pulls up color and it, it almost makes it look detailed. And then when you bring it over to the left, it almost makes it look a little bit flatter. Look at the sky. You don't even see anything up there anymore. All right, bring it down just a little bit. There we go. Uh, brush scale. So you can see the difference here. It just makes a really large brush or a really small brush. I happen to like something that's right in between over here and brush contrast. And you'll see that it just kind of flattens things out, makes the sky almost look flat. It doesn't look like it really has many brush strokes where everything else that tends to get the brush strokes to it. And then you bring this over here toward the right. And that's where you start to see all the little swirlies and stuff. But you got to see the detail that goes through this thing. I mean, just take a look at the brick texture. And that's why I said textures, textures and details work really, really good for it. Because it really starts to pull that detail out and it does something with it. Okay. I'm going to hit OK. Let me show you one other type of photo it works great on. Puppies. <laughs> Kittens, puppies, anything with fur, any outdoors, things like that, it works absolutely great on. Come up here, filter. We'll go to oil paint one more time, but you're going to love it. So let's zoom in. I mean, how can you not love it on a puppy, right? So take a look at, I'm, I'm not even going to change any settings. It's just the settings we used before, but look at what it's doing. Look at, see how it detects the edges of the grass. So it's, it's finding those edges and it's putting brush strokes there. And then it's finding the other edges and it's putting brush strokes on those, but they're individual. It's not just blurring it all together. And that's, that's the coolest part about the filter. Okay. And again, I usually like a fairly high cleanliness setting, fairly high stylization. Keep the colorization right around the middle here. Just kind of search around the photo. I'm just taking a look at different parts of the photo to make sure that it's affecting it nice. I, I, I mean, I think it's almost perfect. So let's click OK here. I want to show you the before and after because I, th I think you almost kind of miss it because we're zoomed in so far. But take a look at the before and after. That's before, that's after. I mean, that's a huge difference for one filter. And if you were to think of the brushwork that this would take, if you were to sit there and actually brush it from scratch, I mean, you're, you're literally talking hours of work here because um, you, you'd, you'd have to be so detailed that when you were brushing it, it, it would take quite a bit of time. So to be able to apply it in one filter is great. Again, you can get it for free for CS5 
or CS6, just head on over to the Adobe Labs website. If you got CS5, search for Pixel Bender. If you want CS6 beta, it's free. You can just download it right there. Thank you.